This is uh, a video to demonstrate how to do a wall in section. Um, this is the alternative uh, choice for the assembly in section, a, an architectural version of an assembly in section rather than a mechanical. Uh, I would advise anybody doing this to take a look at um, architectural templates part one and part two uh, to be able to have the correct layers, line types, line weights, blocks, and so on to start this section. So I'm going to erase this geometry and start from scratch. Uh, we are going to be creating this detail here in section. Minimize it so you can see it and zoom in on the section here. So this is showing a portion of a foundation wall and we're going to construct on top of it what we would see in section if we were to slice through a, a residential structure um, starting from the top of the foundation. So this is our mud cell. This is our header. And we can see the sizes of the header over here. Um, this is showing the joist beyond. We see our uh, layer of uh, three-quarter inch subfloor or sheathing. On top of that, we have three-quarters of an inch finished floor. And this is um, showing here uh, the exterior siding. And inside that, the exterior sheathing. We have a threshold for a door. As we're slicing through a door, and we move up, we can see the door in section and the door frame in section here. And then inside the wall supporting the um, the opening of the door are two headers. And those are two 2 by 10 headers with bat insulation. We have a double top plate on top of that and that is consists of the whole wall in section. Then we start a new platform by constructing a 2 by 8 here which would be a, a 7 and a quarter inch uh, two, with a 2 by 8 header joist. We're seeing strapping, which is one by three strapping with half an inch gypsum wallboard, half an inch gypsum wallboard on the inside face of the wall. On top of our platform, our two by eights, uh, we have our three quarter inch sheathing again and three quarters of an inch finish floor. And we have a new shoe plate resting on top of our subfloor for our second floor wall section. And we have a window in section this time instead. Um, and we've uh, got uh, the two by two two by six sub sill the window which is a four foot window you can see the value the size of it here 30 by 48 the 30 is the width the 48 is the height this is representing trim for that window here and here the sill and the header trim and then under uh, above the window supporting the opening for the window we have two two by four headers which are actually three and a half inches in actual size and then we have here the two two by six top plate and then on top of that we end up with the ceiling joist what you can do in place of the um, assembly in section is to create a full wall section like this um, we're going to create um, the wall section so that we include a door and window opening so I'm basically recreating this detail uh, exactly the way you see it and then we'll add all the annotation that we see here plus all the dimensions that it would be required. You notice we have two dimensions here and here which I will, will reveal what they should end up being once we uh, lay out all the other dimensions and lay out all the detailing. So I'm going to start with in AutoCAD a layer for detail 4 that will be my thick line weight I'm using to define the outline of all of these things in section. When you're slicing through something, if you're slicing through something, the boundaries of that object should be a thick line and then a hatch on the inside of it, which is what we're seeing here. There's a hatch pattern, for example, is a concrete hatch. That should be a really light line weight. That's kind of a, similar to section lining if you were to do this by, by hand. So I'm just going to draw with a line, line command, um, a line an arbitrary length down here, not too tall. Um, and I'm noticing that I'm seeing uh, feet here, so I want to probably drop that down so I'm looking at inches. I probably only want that to be about 10 inches to 12 inches tall. And then the width of the uh, foundation wall should be 10 inches and then the height should match over here on this side. Now since there's not going to be any more information from that foundation wall, I want to put a break line in here. And we can draw a break line by going to detail one layer because I want it to be a thin line weight. And I'm going to use the P line command, track from this end point back, and then just create a little zigzag just like that. And then track over. And there's our P line break line. 
All right, this is where our construction starts. So I want to make sure that I'm on the correct layer so I can define the outline um, of the uh, of individual uh, lumber pieces correctly. Now, we are going to use the XLUM block that we uh, learned to make in the uh, previous vi video for our um, architectural template part two. So again, if you haven't seen that video, you, you may not know how to create this block. You might have to go back, look at the video, and then learn how to create the block. We're going to insert the XLUM block, which is a one by one block. I want to make sure the insertion point, the scale and rotation is turned on. And I'm going to pop it in here and then define the X factor as five and a half and the Y factor as one and a half. Now if you're not sure what the actual size to nominal size for lumber is, because this is a two by six, I do have in um, the week notes some information about that uh, in a, as a quick reference. So if you go to the R drive, go to AEDD 105 in the Como folder and open up week 12 notes, there is a section that shows some um, uh, framing terminology, which will help you to understand what I'm talking about when we start to lay out the section. We're slicing through, for instance, that portion of a wall right now um, that we're going to be showing in, in section. This will show you the lumber sizes, a nominal to actual. So a two by six, for instance, is really one and a half inches by five and a half inches. And if you have this printed and have it out next to you, you'll know what to type in for X and Y values so that you get the actual size, not the nominal size. All right, so the next step, if we go back to our assembly, we need to put in this um, floor joist. So I'm going to go back over to AutoCAD, and I'm going to insert, oh, that floor joist, by the way, should be a 2 by 10. So I'm going to insert again the same exact block. This time I wanted to find the X value as 1.5 and, and the Y value of 9.25, which is the actual size of a 2 by 10. So what we're seeing here, there's the mud sill that's attached directly to the foundation wall, and we're seeing the floor joists uh, in section. What we would see here is the edge of the sheathing, which would be 0.75 inches, the bottom edge of the sheathing, and the bottom edge of the joist beyond. All right, next we're going to have to define where this door is in section. Um, and to do that properly, I need to know a few things that I'm going to tell you in the video. I need to make sure that the door opening is to the right rough opening. So I'm going to offset this line 6 feet 10 and a half inches. So that's defining the door rough opening. Here on top of this line, I want to insert I want to define where I'm supposed to be inserting that by drawing this line up here and offsetting that line five and a half for the size of a two by six. I need to insert my two headers. So I'm going to go back to my assembly and reference what size those two headers need to be. Those need to be two two by tens here and here. And that line that I just drew is representing where this line right here is for the rough opening for my door. So I'm going to insert the X lumber block again put one here that's going to be 1.5 for an X value and nine and a quarter for a Y value and I want to just copy that over to the other side. Now stacked on top of that I want my two two by uh, sixes so I'm going to insert X lum again put that in and a X value of five and a half a Y value of one and a half and I just need to copy that up. So there's, that's defining uh, where my door and my wall will be in section. So now I just want to create the door frame here. So I'm going to offset 0.5 inches. That's going to be the half an inch on the inside for the gypsum wall board, half an inch on the outside for the sheathing. And I'm going to insert the X lum again, and this time I'm going to use a one by. So I want to insert that and have that be at 0.75 for an X value and 3.5 for a Y value, so I'm using a 1 by 4. And I'm going to move that right to there and then copy that over to the other side. So this is going to be part of our frame or trim that we're kind of creating. So inside from here to here, I want to create a 1 by that's going to enclose that opening and finish it. So we'll use the XLM command again. And let's do an X direction here of um, 
let's try seven and a quarter and a y direction of 0.75 and we'll just move that into place so that this point hits the midpoint of those exterior uh, two, uh, one by framing, framing members. Now inside here we should have a door jam. The door jam is just going to be a one by two. So I'm going to insert same X lumber. We're going to make that one and a half by 0.75 and then I'll move that really anywhere within that space because what it's going to do is define where the door is going to frame into. I want to just make sure that that's doesn't seem to want to snap to an endpoint there. There we go. And we'll just move that over. All right, so this is the door frame. Um, and so we wouldn't be able to see any of these gypsum wallboard and sheathing lines beyond this point. So I'm going to use the trim command to trim those away. But I would be able to see some lines that are representing the frame of the door beyond. So if you look at these lines here, there's the frame of the door beyond here and here, and there's the door jam here and here. So this is more like uh, showing a hollow metal frame, and then what I'm doing here is showing more of a wood constructed frame. So I'm going to switch to a different layer because these are representing lines that we're not slicing through anymore, but lines we're seeing beyond. And I want to draw a line from here down to the bottom. And I'm just going to copy that line from each one of these points because each one of these points would recreate a line beyond that you would see within the doorway. Now this here would be where your door rests so that the door opens and closes and rests up against that jam. And that door should be in section, which means the outline of the door should be thicker. And we could even hatch that door to make it clear that it's in section. Off to the side, I'm going to create a rectangle that defines the thickness of a door and the height of a door in section if we were looking at it in a vertical section. So that would be at one and a half by six feet, eight inches. And I'm going to take the edges of that door frame and put them on a layer that will ref reflect the correct line weight. So I'm putting them on a detail three layer. And as you recall from the previous um, vi video, we created those detail layers so we can control the line weights of things based on which layer we place them on. So I want this on the detail three layer so it will be a point three line weight. And then I'm going to hatch that by using B hatch. And we'll go ahead and use the default hatch pattern, but I need to scale it up to about what I think I'm going to need it to be for my, my uh, detail scale. So I'm going to try 20, hit add pick points, pick inside of that box area and do a preview. And that hatch pattern is a little bit too far apart so I'm going to change that value to 10, do a preview again and that's about what I want to see. So I'll hit enter. Now move both the hatch pattern and the actual rectangle representing the door and move it so it's right inside the corner there. Um, and now you can see at the bottom we have room to draw a threshold. Now the threshold really can be eyeballed. Uh, so if you don't get it drawn exactly like mine, I wouldn't worry about it. What I'm going to do is draw a line from oh somewhere around here over to here. And then have that slope down. Draw a line straight down until it tracks to the front and create that threshold shape. So we'll do the same in the front. And here in this example, I'm going to offset the 75 for the finish floor and that will help you to know where to stop that threshold on the other side. So really the threshold would go to somewhere around here and then come down so that it meets the finish floor. Um, and that, that may not be exactly what it looks like but like I said um, the threshold is really being drawn there as a representative piece or in symbol so as long as it looks like a threshold and kind of acts like a threshold, then it's fine. So there's your door in section. And we can get rid of this line because it's our construction line. All right, next we want to build the next floor platform. So I'm going to start all over again by inserting my X lumber here. And that's going to be one and a half by seven and a quarter this time. If you take a look at the section that we've been using in reference, the second floor has two by eights, which the actual size of a two by eight is seven and a quarter. So that's the correct size. I would see on top of here 
whoops, I want to go from here actually, um, line representing the bottom of the sheathing. If I use uh, three quarters of an inch offset, that's the top of the uh, sheathing. And this line, these lines here would stop at the top of the wall. And we also see a line here to represent the bottom of the joist. Now what goes on here is we want to show the actual finishes. So I'm going to use the X lumber command again. Um, place that here and I want to put that in at um, uh, two and a half by 0.75. And that gives me the correct size one by three strapping. It's just not in the right position so I want to move it down. So it's right up against the top, top plate. All right, next we're going to see another line here, and that's representing the bottom or the top edge of the gypsum wall board, which should be a half an inch thick. So I just offset that in. And then this line here for the um, gypsum wall board on the wall would come up to that point, and then this wall gypsum wall board would be behind it. So this would be installed first, for instance, and then the wall would go up after the fact. Now this strapping is at 16 inches on center, so I'm just going to copy it one over. So we can see two, and I'm just going to stretch my lines so that we can see enough of that to, to have that reflected. Actually, I should stretch these so that they're the same length as the ones we have down below. And then we can use a break line to show that there's more information here beyond. So I do need to copy this over one more, like so. So we have 16 inch on center spacing. Alright, on top of here, uh, we want to have another uh, shoe plate, so I'm going to just copy the one down below up, and I'm going to draw a line here and offset 0.5 to represent the thickness of the gypsum wall board on the second floor. Now for the second floor, we are going to use a wall height of s 7 feet 6 inches, which will give us a finished floor to finished ceiling height of 7 foot 4. So I'm going to offset 7 foot 6, stretch these lines right up to that point, make sure I'm tracking a straight line and then I just want to copy this up to the top of that wall so we have two copies to represent our double top plate at the top. Now this line here will be our ceiling joist so I'm going to offset that 5.5 to represent our ceiling joist and we're pretty much done with the wall section at that point. So we're going to fill in our, our uh, uh, window in section and um, add the gypsum wall board and the strapping up here. We can do that really quickly by just copying what we have already down below from there to there. Whoops. Pick the wrong pot spot. We want to go from there to there and then bring this down. Um, now I've just got to configure the uh, window and what I want to do is put in two 2x4s two here and that's going to define where my window trim will go. I'm going to do the exact same thing we did here up here to define the window. We just need to configure a top and bottom sash for the double hung window. So I'm going to insert X lumber again and that will be one and a half by three and a half for a 2x4 and I want to move that so that that corner is locked in there and copy that over to this side. So we have two 2 by 4s over that window. Next I'm just going to take this configuration and copy it using that point right there as my reference because it should be the same point above and that helps me to define my window sill. And we're going to have another a header rather. We're going to have a sill down here. Um, the window uh, depth remember is supposed to be 4 feet so I'm going to take that from the bottom of the header I'm going to offset down four feet. Looks like I didn't quite get that to be in the right spot. So I'm going to move both of these and make sure, yep, see it just snapped to the wrong spot. Make sure it's at the right spot. All right, so this should show you where you want to take this whole configuration and just mirror it down. So I'm going to mirror this, this, and this. Midpoint between two points as a reference and bring that down. Now this shows you where that double 
um, subsill should be. So I'm going to copy the top plate because it's exactly the same thing. Move that down here to where the double subsill is. You might have to track off the endpoint to do this and get that to show up right underneath our finish sill. Now the lines from here, I'll go ahead and extend those construction lines so we can use them to trim. The lines from here to here should be trimmed and we're going to see the same lines that we see beyond in the wall so they should be on that thinner layer. Now I can just copy them straight up and trim them to where the finished window is. So I'm using B trim this time to trim to this edge. That's going to allow me to trim these lines to that edge. Well, a couple of lines didn't trim there, so I can just move them to that spot instead. There we go. And that's what that should look like. Now to draw the sill on the inside, um, I'm going to create, actually it's, we can simplify this and call this a casement window instead. We'll do just a single sill and you can kind of figure out what you'd have to do for a double hung window. If I create one rectangle um, and have that track over from here one and a half inches and then we'll just move that whole rectangle in a little bit because uh, usually the window is going to be a place slightly to the outside so we have a little bit of a stool and then a sill out here. Um, I then want to create a line here that's one and a half inches down and one at the bottom, one and a half inches up. And then if I draw a line from the midpoint to the midpoint on top, that's representing our glazing. So now we have a window in section um, that shows a, a casement window rather than a double hung window. If you want to see the double hung window detail, take a look at what I've got drawn here. You don't need to get this detailed with the sash. If you want to, just you know, add a champ for a fillet at the corners there and you, add, you can notice you can add a lot of extra lines. In. And uh, in the next video, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to add insulation, add hatching, and um, you can go ahead and use the uh, um, dimensioned and uh, uh, text that we created to add the, the leaders in the annotation.